guys, Howard here with another classic from the original Alice Cooper band. I did a video for uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy a while back and everyone really enjoyed it. And so several viewers wanted me to do more classic Alice. So what could be more classic than School's Out, right? Uh, they were a great two guitar band. Uh, to my ears, they had some of the best two guitar arrangements in rock. They really worked well together. And this song is no exception. So there's a couple of guitars throughout the whole thing and there's some lead fills and all that. And uh, I'll show you how I used to play it live, just kind of mixing the parts up, but I'll also discuss how they're actually being played, okay? So uh, the original parts, that is. So anyway, let's get going. Uh, that opening riff, that iconic riff, uh, sometimes you see it played with a power chord out the gate. <laughs> and sometimes just an open E string. But if you listen carefully to the recording, what you actually hear is the open E string combined with the 14th fret on the A string. So that is essentially a power chord, but an octave apart. Very cool sound, gives it a real bite. So you've got a slight bit of muting back here, not much, but uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you kill both of those strings before you go to the bar at the 14th fret. And what's happening there, as you can see from the tab, is I'm barring across the D, the G, and the B at the 14th fret, and then moving that to the 12th fret. So we get this. Like so, right? So you can see a little bit of muting again there, and just making sure that you really get off of that when you go there. You don't want to just lay your finger down, otherwise that note might ring through, right? And then you can see after 14, 12, 14, we hit the 12th fret on the G string, give it a nice little rock and roll vibrato. So we've got... And then what you actually hear on the recording, uh, sometimes you hear it played like this. But what's actually happening there is this. And you can really hear that on the recording and you can play it as a straight pull off using all three fingers or if you're graceful <laughs> with your slides, you can do it that way. I do it with pull offs. So that is the opening riff and you play it that way in a circle until Alice starts singing. <laughs> Then when he starts singing, they do away with this. That's out of the picture now, and you're just playing this. So again, you just leave out the... Uh, <laughs> leave that out uh, when the uh, vocal comes in, okay? And then, of course, we move to the next part, and we have a C bar chord, three on the uh, A string, and then using your ring finger, bar at the fifth fret over the D, the G, and the B strings, okay? And there's a specific rhythm on this, the way they ascend these chords. We're going to move from C to D to E flat. So we're really popping those chords very staccato. Right? So I'm muting in between each one back here to really tighten that up. Now we move to D with an upstroke and a downstroke. So that's a very specific rhythm that you hear on that original recording. So you've got like seven times here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we move to E flat and we take the same approach. First an upstroke and then a downstroke followed again by those staccato jabs. So the whole thing is played like this. eight of those right after that first upstroke on the E flat. So that's really cool. Let me play that for you one more time.
right into the chorus uh, and this part I'm going to uh, show you a couple of different ways to play it okay uh, the way I used to play it live because I was the only guitar player <laughs> in the band and then uh, the way it is on the recording okay so here's the chorus uh, mapped out for you the way you'll hear it on the uh, recording <laughs> So that's one of the guitar parts. So we have a G minor chord, full six string job. Then we're moving up to B flat and I'm just playing a power chord but with three fingers, sixth fret on the uh, sixth string, and then the eighth fret on the A string, and then your pinkies on the eighth fret on the D string. And that moves from B flat to C. Then take that same shape, Pop it down one set of strings. I know you can see that on the tab, but again, nice and slow. And you play that three times, okay? And then what we have is an A chord. And then we have a G chord, a G triad. Three on the B string, four on the G string, five on the D string, and the open A string to an F. And for that F, I'm just playing uh, the top four strings, meaning closest to you. First fret, third fret, third fret, and second fret. So we've got the chords happening three times, then the A to the G over A, and then the F. So we have. So let's talk about another way to play that chorus if you happen to be the only guitar player in the band. Uh, this is just an idea, but I'm offering it up because uh, it's the way I used to do it live quite a bit. Um, so you've got that galloping rhythm in there, right? So again, if you're the only guitar player in the band and you want to make things sound full, you might want to jump on that, right? But at the same time, you've got to make those chords happen. So this is what I used to do live. And that's a lot of fun to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a finger full and uh, a lot happening in your right hand, but I'll show you how I'm doing it anyway. There's a bit of muting back here, but you don't want to mute the chords out, right? So I hit the full G minor. So I've got this down, up, down, down, up, down, down pattern going in my right hand, basically. Right? And then you've just got to break away from that where the chords are supposed to hit. Uh, so I've got that constant note happening. We've got the G minor chord, and then I move to the third fret, basically on the D and G string. But if you happen to hit the, uh, the B string, it sounds even better moves to five and then back to uh, the A string and the D string at the third fret and then I use these two fingers to play those same strings at the fifth fret I hope that makes sense so I've got this and then sixth string in between. So that 
that can be a bit challenging to play. I, I haven't actually played it for a while myself. But again, if you're the only guitar player in the band, that's pretty cool to play, okay? So let's talk about the lead fills that are inserted into the chorus, all right? So the first one is simply this, which you can see on the tab. So you want to keep that B string in place. You don't want to bend that one, just the G string. And I put that finger in front of it or behind it, depending on how you look at it, and push it till it almost matches the pitch of the B string. And the second one is... And he's got that wicked vibrato at the end of that one, but that's pretty easy. Bend, release, pick, and vibrato. And then the last one he plays pretty loose, but it's the same idea. 15th fret on the E string, first E string, and then the uh, 16th fret, or excuse me, 18th fret on the B string. You just, just kind of do what you want with that one, but basically it's the same idea. You're pushing the B string down to kind of meet the pitch of the E string at the 15th fret, okay? And that's it, really. And you just kind of insert that in between uh, the choruses. And obviously, it's easier to do if you're playing just... as opposed to the kind of hybrid way that I was showing you earlier. Although you can do that as well. That's a lot of work, I guess, but it's worth it, again, if you're the only guy playing the six strings in the band. And then, of course, as already mentioned, uh, we move to the A chord, the G over A, and then the F. But you'll hear that second guitar playing that. Right? So you can kind of put those two parts together as well. Hit the A chord. And then what I would do is use that same technique that we've been using on a couple of those breaks. I place my index finger, my first finger, on the 10th fret on the B string and then 12th fret on the G string with that finger in front of it. And it gives it a little bit more uh, meat, if you will, when you're doing it. So you hit the A chord and do that. And then to emulate the G over A, just hit the open A string, D string, and G string. Do the bend again, and then finally the F chord. So that sounds pretty cool. So that's just a, a few options for you and a couple of different ways to approach it. And I really like this next part. It's very um, Lydian sounding, very West Side Story, if you will. But this is where we hear the bass playing. So it's basically moving from a C to a D chord, but we have this line. And I'm going to put both uh, lines in here so you can play it in harmony. And it's back to the main riff, okay? There's a couple of different ways you can approach this. Obviously, if you're in a band and you've got the bass player playing that or even another guitar player, you can just go off and play that and you'll probably want to back off the volume a little bit so you get a little bit cleaner tone, maybe switch your toggle switch around. But 
what sounds so cool about that to me is that they've got that over those chords, so it gives it a real Lydian sound. <laughs> So there's all the parts, but let's talk about a couple of the uh, other lead breaks. I'm not covering the uh, little guitar solo in the middle, uh, but, you know, hey, if you guys want me to do that, I'll do that in a separate uh, video, okay? Because this is probably getting too long already. <laughs> So let's talk about that one. That's a vicious vibrato. He might even be uh, using a whammy bar. It's so uh, quick. Anyway, we're bending, as you can see, at the 13th fret on the B string. Two full step bends. Then hold that bend, pick it, and release it. Landing the 12th fret on the G string, and then 11 on the B string. And just give it that just intense vibrato. Return to the chords again. And then we have this high lead break up here. Again, a vicious vibrato on that one. <laughs> More intense than what I just did. Uh, it's pretty cramped up there. Uh, I think they played it on an SG, so it's a little bit easier. But anyway, we're up pretty high. We're on the uh, 20th fret, and we're doing full step bends on that first E string. So you bend it full step and strike it again. Four times in a row, and then you can see from the tab I'm pulling off, right? Pulling off to uh, 18. 20 on the B string. Back to uh, the E string. And then a really vicious vibrato again. And then after that last lead break, it's school's been blown to pieces, and it's G minor, F, to C. And then you hear that second guitar in there adding. That's a full step bend on the G string at the 10th fret. You can kind of toss that in if you want to, but you've definitely got to attack those chords. So you might try something like... And then it's right back to. And you play that whole uh, section twice, all right? So there's all the riffs to the tune. I trust you can listen to it for the arrangement. And uh, again, uh, the solo in the middle is pretty brief, but it is a cool solo. So maybe I might do that in a separate video or something. Uh, for the most part, it seems like everybody just really wants to learn the song itself. So you guys can let me know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you guys real soon.